Hi everyone. So far we have uh, given some overview about uh, so called uh, CMOS technology, CMOS electronics and overview on or evolution on CMOS photonics technology. Meaning uh, we have just uh, discussed about uh, uh, how CMOS fabrication process can be translated directly to fabricate uh, photonics chip that is what CMOS photonics. And we have seen that uh, in CMOS electronics if you see it is electronics and semiconductor is basically the main platform. But apart from semiconductor we have seen that uh, metal also used for interconnect and then dielectric you use for dielectric material like silicon dioxide or silicon nitride etc used for isolation or insulation purpose and then third thing is semiconducting material you use for actual device transistor devices ok. So, this is all this is a three different type of materials you use and since our CMOS photonics also is directly we are considering that that similar technology similar process lines. So, there also we have the availability of metal, availability of dielectric and availability of semiconductor. So, all these things we use for uh, photonics devices, photonics circuits and obviously we need to know, we need to understand when we talk about photonics devices, photonics devices means basically we talk about photonic integrated circuit means it is basically light wave circuit. So, light wave circuit meaning how light you are controlling in the circuit, light wave you are controlling, light flow, photon flow you are controlling in the photonic circuit, this is similar to electronics flow control in electronic circuits. So, we need to understand how light waves behaves in these three materials, that is the fundamental thing. If we know how that behaves the light waves in these materials, metals, dielectric, semiconductor, then it will be easier for us to design photonic integrated circuit components. So, today we will be trying to understand bit of fundamentals of light wave. Light wave is nothing but it is electromagnetic waves ok and this electromagnetic waves how it behaves in these three material platform I will be discussing today ok. And you know when we talk about electromagnetic waves you cannot just get rid of the uh, Maxwell's equations because Maxwell's equations actually is the key to discover electromagnetic waves ok. And we will try to understand the electromagnetic waves, how it propagates in free space and then how it interacts with the material medium. When we talk about material medium, the electromagnetic wave in material medium light matter you can say light matter interaction or electromagnetic wave material interaction. For that purpose we need to consider three different parameter so called epsilon, mu and sigma. So, these parameters it is you know that this epsilon is basically called as a um, so called permittivity. And then this is called permeability and this is called conductivity. So, any material if you are considering uh, in terms of electronics or in terms of photonics, you need to consider these three only these three parameters. How what is the value of these three parameters? 
in the material medium. Okay. Normally, the epsilon permittivity, mu permeability, which is a magnetic material permeability, etc., comes sigma conductivity, whether depending on the conductivity, we can actually distinguish whether it is a metal, it is dielectric, and it is a semiconductor or not. So, we need to understand also how this electromagnetic waves behaves in presence of some values, material to material, how that they behave. So, that also we need to know. Okay. So, what we would like to do that, we will just start with Maxwell's equations and then slowly, slowly we will try to understand that how these Maxwell's equations help to understand that electromagnetic wave exist even in the free space and they can travel also in the free space first. So, after we understand these basic things, then we will try to understand how this electromagnetic waves behaves inside a material medium. And if that material medium is a dielectric, how it behaves? And if that is a semiconductor, how it behaves? And if it is a conductor, how it behaves? What is the nature? So, that is very, very important to understand a photonic integrated circuits. Starting from waveguide to device components, etc., everything you will understand or you can design if you know certain material having this type of property and how they are technologically viable along with along, along the line of CMOS fabrication process. Okay. So, let us move on. So, first question, I start with a question. Can time varying electric and magnetic field, time varying electric field or magnetic field exist independently? So, you can create an electric field, for example, if you can have an electric field of source, say E equal to E naught e to the power j omega t, just sine wave. It can be a field, it can be a certain direction electric field it can have, time varying field. Okay. And you can think of magnetic field also, you can have a magnetic field source, different ways you know how to create that magnetic field can be also time varying. So, first question is that we will try to understand that whether this electric field if it is time varying with a certain angular frequency omega is angular frequency okay, that is basically 2 pi f when f is the linear frequency and sometimes you can write like this 2 pi c by lambda wavelength, so called things we know that that is why we introduced. So, thing is that here when I just mention this one electric field independently it is a, at a certain point in space you can consider that this is varying. Okay. And you can say that at a particular point your magnetic field, particular point in the space magnetic field is oscillating sinusoidally. Now, question is that can they be related? For example, since electric field is a vector, if I just try to express this vector, electric field vector is space dependent as well. You can have a electric field space dependent. For example, if you have a point charge somewhere, you can calculate your electric field every point according to the Coulomb's law, etc. You can find out what is the uh, field surrounding it that is x, y, z dependent. You can consider Cartesian coordinate system. And of course, you can have that field every point can be time dependent. So, I can express electric field space dependent x, y, z, t. So, I can say that at any point you can have three components x component, y component, z component. And every where you can have the x component also space dependent, it can happen that in one point x component is high and another point y component is high, higher. So, that can happen that is why we can say that point to point I can actually decompose what are the electric field components x component, y component, z three orthogonal direction you can just think of and they are time dependent also you can think of. Similarly, I can also think of magnetic field this magnetic field also 
x dependent, x component, y component, z component at space dependent, x, y, z coordinate. So, you can think of this is the uh, say this uh, if I consider this is your x or this is z and this is say x and this is z, y, x, y, z you can just consider the frame, reference frame and every point I can define what is the electric field and time dependent things. So, if you define electric field, magnetic field like that, it is fine, you can just think them independently. But Maxwell actually showed that if electric field is time varying, before Maxwell it was known, if electric field is time varying, then you can generate magnetic field and magnetic field is time varying, then you can generate also electric field. So, I will try to understand what is that actually and how that can be explained using your Maxwell's equations. Okay? If they are existing with time dependent variation in space, then obviously they should be related. Okay? So, let us see. This is Maxwell's equations. It is basically combination of law existed earlier some laws, physical laws already known before and Maxwell combined them together with some modification. How that is? First law is that this one, curl of E, curl of E is the electric field vector is related to rate of change of magnetic field, B is the magnetic field induction and E is the electric field. And if time varying magnetic field is there, then you can find that electric field, curl of electric field will be generated. Rotation of electric field you can find out. And similarly, if you have magnetic field rotation is there, then obviously that magnetic field can generate because of the conduction current is defined by this. If you have electric field, then sigma conductivity is there then conduction current density, if conduct and cu conduction current density, if it is there, then you can see magnetic field. But Maxwell's thought that if time varying magnetic field can give you electric field, so time varying electric field also, this current density can be time invariant, that means uh, time independent. But you can have additional component which can be time varying that can contribute to magnetic field. This D is related to electric field by the way, it will be a clear little later. That is called for the moment you know that D is known as displacement vector. Displacement vector. All right. So, so this displacement vector means you are just rate of change of displacement vector is normally we can call it displacement current J D. So, that means Maxwell actually added this J D term displacement current. If there is a electric field oscillating in a material medium, then you should have a displacement vector to be considered and that displacement vector time variant of displacement vector can be a current component can be considered as a current component. So, he actually added this particular component and he tried to match whatever existing curl equal to del B by del T. So, basically this is actually called Faraday law and this is actually ampere circuital law. Ampere circuital law was existing up to here. So, Maxwell added this part. Okay. And this one is the Gauss divergence law for the electric field divergence D and uh, D again is related to electric field, I will just explain. And rho V that is the charge density and since there is no monopole exist in magnetic field, magnetic uh, monopole cannot exist. So, divergence B equal to 0. So, we can write that simply divergence B, B again I will be discussing how it is related to magnetic field. So, this is actually Gauss law, this is also Gauss law, this is for electric field and this is for magnetic field. Okay. Now, if you just look this Faraday law and 
ampere circuit and low modified ampere circuit and low which is modified by Maxwell's equation then you see that electric field and magnetic field they are coupled here also electric field is there magnetic field electric field magnetic mag magnetic field electric field will be there so, j is equal to sigma e this is basically it is coming out of Ohm's law no? so, material medium if some conductivity or resistivity is there and field is there then you can see the current density fine so far so good now as I said what is that displacement vector that is actually defined like this d equal to epsilon e epsilon I have just mentioned earlier that it is the permittivity of any this permittivity can happen in the free space this permittivity can happen also in the medium and that can be expressed in terms of this one where this particular term we just represent here we call it polarization density that means if you apply a electric field that electric field will have two components one is just electric field and if it is a material medium in the material medium you know material medium it is composition of uh, electrons whole uh, electrons protons all those type of things so any electric field is there there you can create some kind of dipole moment and that dipole moment can create also some kind of uh, so called dipole moment per unit volume is called polarization. So, that polarization that dipoles can also create some contribution to the external electric field. So, you add them together this this is as if nothing is there epsilon 0 is corresponding to permittivity corresponding to free space normally ok. So, with that you just add this one that is actually polarization density and together we call displacement vector. And if you little bit simplify this epsilon 0 1 over chi e this chi e is representation is nothing but basically p we are writing p is equal to epsilon 0 chi e electric field. Basically polarization density is proportional to electric field and proportional to constant epsilon 0 we are considering just free space multiplied by some factor which is actually responsible for the material property. Okay, that is actually called susceptibility, electrical susceptibility. And if you do that, then you just put down this epsilon r, where epsilon r you are putting as 1 plus epsilon. So, this one, this one is your epsilon r. So, you are writing basically epsilon 0 times epsilon r. That means, if I consider epsilon 0 is the permittivity of the free space, epsilon r actually contributing because of the presence of material, material how it behaves with electric field. So, that actually being represented by epsilon r and it is known as relative permittivity, permittivity sometimes it is called relative dielectric constant of the material all right. So, that means, I can say that this d equal to epsilon e where epsilon e is simply we can write epsilon 0 epsilon r forget about all the susceptibility etcetera. So, material property is consolidated in epsilon r and as a whole it is by epsilon. Similarly, we define B which is called magnetic induction density that can be defined as similar to epsilon you just define as a mu mu times magnetic field strength mu h and similar to that one if I just follow up you can think of some kind of magnetic dipole also that can create some certain kind of so called magnetization it is something like polarization we can call it here magnetization ok and then this is this thing will be called as a magnetic susceptibility and 1 plus chi m can be called as a mu r and this will be mu is called permittivity permeability permeability and this one will be called as a relative permeability. So, do not confuse with permittivity and permeability. Permeability is related to magnetic field and permittivity related to your so called uh, electric field. In another word this thing actually characterize 
the medium in terms of distributed capacitance and distributed inductance. Inductance is related to magnetic field, capacitance related to electric field. So, if you can consider it entire medium, even it is free space or material medium, you can think of they have certain kind of distributed capacitance and distributed in inductance that is actually directly related to your electric field and magnetic field. Capacitance can hold electric, it can somehow hold some electric field inside it and inductance also it can hold some magnetic field inside it. Okay. So, so far so good. So, we have defined D B used in Maxwell's equations. Let us move on. This material parameter, I said that you can find that there are many ways to experimentally measure the value of uh, so called epsilon 0 in free space that is actually 8.85 into 10 to the minus 12 farad per meter. Farad you know it is a dimension unit of capacitance and per meter it is something distributed per unit length what is the capacitance for example that is what you can interpret like epsilon 0. Similarly, mu 0 you can interpret like it is a inductance Henry inductance you can measure by Henry that uh, unit of induction is Henry, Henry per meter and that is 4 pi into 10 to the minus 7 in SI units all these are talking. And free space of course, the sigma conductivity free space you cannot just think of current because cu for current you need to have electronic flow conduction right. So, that that is why you can think of that to conductivity particularly this conduction current, this conduction current actually Mm, absent in the free space. Though you can think of in free space del d del t, you can think of del d if it is free space that can be written as epsilon 0 e by del t. That means del d del t equal to this one obviously vector epsilon 0 del e del t. That means you can think that this d in free space this j d can present somewhat. Displacement current can present, but conduction current is absent in free space. You cannot just flow current in free space, otherwise it would have been huge problem. Fine. All right. So, I just consolidated here in free space. Just Maxwell's equation I have written down uh, in free space coupled to Carl equation, so called Carl equation. And uh, if I just see in the free space, d will be equal to it is divergence d d equal to epsilon 0 e and epsilon 0 you take out that means ultimately we are getting divergence e equal to 0. Similarly, divergence b equal to 0 can be converted into b equal to say mu 0 h divergence b equal to 0. So, mu 0 can be taken factor out. So, it can be 0 sigma equal to 0 in free space j c equal to 0 and j d will be equal to this one that is what I explained okay. and this numbers you just keep in mind sometimes it is useful to, to solve some problems also. And then, then we derive wave equation in free space. How it is that? We try to decouple electric field and magnetic field from this coupled equation. How it can be done? So, it can be done very simple. Suppose you do this curl, curl of E equal to minus mu 0 del del T h h I am writing here. If you take one more curl, then what happens? Right hand side I can put down like this curl of h. Okay. And then curl of h you have the expression here. You just put this curl of h instead of curl of h you put this one. Okay. Then the left hand side is only electric field, right hand side also will be electric field. And left hand side, what you can do, you can expand this with a vector identity like this one minus grad square E. This is left hand side. And again divergence E, you know that in free space that is equal to 0. So, this will be 0. So, it is left over del square E. So, that del square E we are writing and minus mu 0 epsilon 0 del 2 del E 2 that is how you get your decoupled equation. Similarly, for magnetic field you can start with this equation take curl from both side and then substitute curl E here then you get this equation. 
And if you see carefully, what is this del, del square? Del is basically a vector quantity. This is an operator. It is basically called a del operator. It can operate on any scalar. If it operate on a scalar, the scalar will become a vector. And it can also operate on vector also. You have x component, you have to see del del x, how it is varying along x direction and along y direction how it is varying and along z direction how it is varying. So, this variation in all three directions, you clap together that is actually vector. And if you try to see the del square, del square means it is nothing but del dot del. So, del dot del means this one. You can represent this del and del square in other systems also, reference system like spherical coordinate system, cylindrical coordinate system. But most of the time we will be dealing in uh, photonic integrated circuit, this Cartesian coordinate system is better, it is all right. Sometimes you know if you are dealing with fiber optics, normally it is better to have a cylindrical coordinate system. In that case you can represent cylindrical coordinate system, I am not going into that details. Just you remember this one, del operator is like this and del square operator will be like this. So, del square operator here, okay, del square is a scalar by the way and del square you are operating on vector, it will be a vector of course and this is also vector. So, this is basically the vector equation, differential equation vector. And if you see that this can be solved basically. In fact, if you solve this equation, this one independently, or this one you can independently you can solve, you can find their value. Okay? You can find a solution, possible solution. Once you find a possible solution and validate it by this differential equation, then you can find magnetic field by using one of these equation. If you know electric field, then you can find magnetic field through this equation, this equation or this equation you use, you can find. So, it is sufficient to solve one of them. Then you can use this one to find other component. If you are solving electric field, then you can find magnetic field using this equation. If you are solving magnetic field, you can get electric field using this equation. We just try to consider that we assume the monochromatic electromagnetic fields. Instead of time dependent this part, I just consider the time dependent oscill oscillation e to the power j omega t. Every component oscillates with e, e to the power j omega t. I just put here space, s, s just consider that space dependent x component. This is space dependent y component. This is space dependent x, y, z dependent z component. Each of them is factor with e to the power j omega t. That means, its electric field is oscillating with a particular sinusoidal manner. That is why we are writing e to the power j omega t. You can consider just cos omega t or sin omega t, but we will be using e to the power j omega t so that mathematically it would be easier to handle. Similarly, magnetic field if I just consider like that, in that case this del del t and del 2 del t, suppose you are just considering del e del t, then you are con you will be getting j omega e. That means, instead of del del t operator, I can write j omega and del del 2, I will be writing minus omega square because I have these operators basically, I want to use them. Then, if I use this thing, this 2 in these equations, in this Maxwell's equations, then for this one, if I use, then I can write this Maxwell's Carl equation in this form. Here, if you see the time dependent part, I have replaced by j omega and that is why it is called frequency domain coupled fields. Sometimes it is called Fourier domain, Fourier domain coupled fields because frequency and time they are related with Fourier transform, you know, that is sometimes it is called Fourier domain. Okay. If you are using this one, in the wave equation, it will be, this one will be represented by this one. How it is? In free space, we are considering epsilon equal to epsilon 0, mu equal to mu 0, sigma equal to 0, rho v equal to 0. That is how we got. And if I just put this one is equal to minus omega square. If I just put minus omega square, then I write, this will be written as something del square E plus 
mu 0 epsilon 0 omega square e right so mu 0 omega 0 epsilon 0 i can have introduced certain constant i just put this omega square mu 0 epsilon 0 as k square certain constant omega monochromatic wave omega is there mu 0 is constant epsilon is constant so i can put this one and that means this mu 0 epsilon 0 we just use with another constant defined by this one we will come to know that you can remember that c is equal to 1 by mu 0 epsilon 0 it is basically 3 into 10 to the 8 dimension you put down meter per second that uh, normally we know velocity of velocity of light in free space okay so in that case i can get k square equal to omega square by c square if i just define c equal to that like this and if i write k mod of k just square root i am just putting mod i will you will come to know why i am putting mod here because this square root omega by c you can just put plus minus omega by c so that you can have k equal to plus and minus and so on so i can have electric field equation like this and electric field equation like this and this one i am just calling as a wave equation you know why because the solution is like a you will get like a wave solution that means the field is something will be like a space dependent time dependent wave you will be getting a solution normally you can get something solutions like that if if it is only one dimensional we are considering you can get a solution one type of solution like this another type of solution you will be getting ct plus x f ct plus x so if that wave is one dimensional propagating along x direction then we will be calling as this one positive direction and if it is negative direction this will be f c t plus x so function of c t c p is something velocity and time is there there so you can have that type of solutions but we know that if it is homogeneous medium just free space that equation is like that the solutions will be like a wave traveling right i will come to that point a little while later if i just replace with a homogeneous medium that epsilon will be epsilon 0 will be replaced by epsilon 0 epsilon r and mu we are considering like a mu 0 as if mu r equal to 1. So, what is that mu r equal to 1? I am considering isotropic homogeneous medium. When I consider isotropic homogeneous medium one additional inherent thing is that non-magnetic material need not be non-magnetic but most of the photonics devices we will be handling that will be non-magnetic material where mu r should be equal to 1 ok. So, if you consider that then mu is simply equal to mu 0 or mu you can write simply whenever necessary you just put for free space mu 0 and homogeneous media since it is a isotropic homogeneous media it must be we should consider dielectric dielectric medium and charge free dielectric means no conductivity no free carriers are there to conduct current it's a silicon dioxide type dielectric material if you consider that the sigma equal to 0 and charge also is not there this is a special assumption that you are considering wave equation in isotopic medium so your mu 0 will be replaced by mu if it is magnetic mu r equal to 1 non magnetic otherwise mu epsilon i am just simply writing epsilon and mu and then I can write also similar like a free space same equation, but this k definition slightly will be modified because of the presence of epsilon r. The presence of epsilon r insert inserting here you can define k square equal to instead of omega by c square you have to multiply epsilon r, epsilon r will be coming here. Hope this is clear. Then the k will be omega by c times square root of epsilon r and this square root of epsilon r that is square root of dielectric constant or relative permittivity is defined as refractive index called refractive index r i we can say that refractive index this one this is a material property so dielectric material if it is uh, non magnetic then square root of epsilon relative permittivity 
we can represent by another physical parameter called n typically it is defined by n variable and it is refractive index known as refractive index. So, in that case k square will be like this you just keep in mind that thing. Now, this k this k you see here electric field is a vector E s is a vector magnetic field is also vector. So, k I have just defined here if you just make a square root you could well write it like a this one plus minus plus sign and minus sign how to define how to interpret that plus sign and minus sign for k. So, we can say that this plus sign means it is a wave so you, you supposed to get this wave solution which is actually have certain value of k for that wave solution k will be whenever you are getting a solution for E s or H s you will be getting a solution in terms of k, k is a constant for so far. But when you use plus it will signify something and when you use minus you will it will be signifying something. Before that we just think that since it is a vector all are vector E magnetic field we are considering like a vector if we define k is also like a vector then if you write k like a vector I can say that k square will be just simply k x square k y square k z square that can be a scalar. So, if I just simply think about k is a vector then also this equation satisfies well. Indeed, in reality this k you will find it is indeed a vector ok. It has it you can decompose into it has a particular direction also. How is that? Let us little bit move it will be clearer. So, if you are just considering k is a vector one of the solutions one of the solutions of this equation you can write like this because del square r means here we are writing like a x x plus a y x y z coordinate right y plus a z z ok. So, in that case I just simply write the solution plus minus k I can write and if I consider vector that vector will have a some kind of position del square I will be writing. So, this can be a solution for that. So, this will be a solution one of the solutions you can consider there will be multiple solutions which I consider this is one of the solutions where electric field I am just considering the unit vector A e that is the that direction electric field will be there E naught is a constant some amplitude. Similarly, magnetic field will be like that. So, what I consider that r is x y de dependent. So, that means, this E s is x y z dependent will be there I can define quickly and H s also can be x y z dependent and along with that we have a time dependent function each magnetic field magnetic field and electric field they we consider they are originating from harmonics single monochromatic. So, you can think of e to the power j omega t e to the power j omega t both cases. So, in that case total solution time dependent I should not write here E s here this H s because it is time dependent part I have just considered here ok. So, that will be actually you are writing A e e 0 e to the power omega t plus minus k r we are writing plus minus k r k dot r. So, this is the actually solution. So, ultimately I just converted this one into frequency domain after frequency domain we get a solution and then that will be a space dependent solution and then I know that we are considering e to the power j omega t monochromatic wave electromagnetic fields ok. Then we can just multiply this one then you get the solution. So, this is the typical solution you can consider one of the solutions you can consider there can be many ways you can represent differential equation you can have a solution in many form. Here I have just considered that one of the simplest form sinusoidal form e to the power j omega t is there and here also this type of solution. If you just substitute this one here, here it satisfies 
okay with considering r equal to this one and k equal to this one it is well satisfied that is why I, I do not have any problem to consider k is a vector and r is also a vector position vector and this is some kind of indication indicating something which is appearing in the solution also. We have to interpret this one. What is this? How to interpret that one? Okay. That can be interpreted if you just little bit proceed further. What you do? This is a monochromatic plane wave solution. It is called traveling wave. Why this is traveling wave? It will be clearer if you just simply think monochromatic plane wave traveling in only z direction. That means it is only z dependent variation is there, for example. Suppose you have a k is a x, uh, here it is written k x, k y, k z, right. Suppose this one equal to 0, this one equal to 0, only k z is there. Then this term will become what? That will be k z times z and k z since k x k y equal to 0. So, k means I can write simply like k only z direction k is there. So, that is called actually wave vector this k ok k is equal to wave vector is equal to 2 pi by lambda n. So, in that case we can write this one. So, in this e to the power j omega term, this is called phasor term. In phasor term, we have omega t plus minus k z. K consider like this. A k, k and only a z direction. Then we can simply find that if you just see this is something like that, the traveling wave with this is the phase. This is a phase part omega t plus minus k z. I think all this you have learned in electromagnetic theory course. I have just uh, put down here and from here you can find out if you are using a plus sign and minus sign it will show that the phase is traveling will phase motion will be in the direction of negative z direction or positive direction. If you are just considering omega t minus k z that means it is positive z direction it will be traveling and if you are just considering omega t the phase will be phase change will be happening. Uh, at every instant of time in positive z direction and then this will be negative this is positive and this will be negative this is sorry this is will be this will be positive direction and this will be negative direction. So, phase travels and that phase if constant phase if you track how that constant phase is traveling in the positive direction or constant phase certain phase suppose a phase you consider okay phase can vary 0 to 2 pi. So, you consider okay you are just considering when 0 phase is coming appearing again Ri right now 0 phase is here and this 0 phase is will move in positive z direction this 0 phase will move in negative direction right as a function of time. So, this phase how it travels if you just track then you can find that that phase velocity is basically nothing but omega by k and that can be plus minus k is plus minus if you write it will be again you can write plus minus c by epsilon r and c by n. So, that means phase velocity you are ultimately indicating whether it is positive direction propagating or negative direction propagating ok. And of course, sometimes some people use minus j omega t here conventionally it is not used in electromagnetic case, but if you use minus sign then in that case if I put this one and this one minus omega t plus k z that also that represent positive direction propagation and this minus sign I will be putting and this one when you put minus that will be representing minus direction propagation good ok. So, I just uh, written down here with if it is propagating only in the z direction if you are just representing position k vector is along z direction then this k z component we can represent sometimes with beta value that is a traditional in textbook it is just represent like this beta and then same thing I am writing here and uh, one more thing you should uh, keep in mind that Carl equation for a forward propagating monochromatic electrical wave electromagnetic wave. 
So, if you just use this one, this equations or this equation, this two equation and you substitute here and this one you substitute here, then what you get after this is a solution you are using and directly you are using in substituting in curl equation, then you get this one and you get this one. After simplification you get this one, this, this left hand side k e 0 and k direction is unit vector a k, electric field direction is a e. So, a k cross a e and e 0 will be there, e 0 is some kind of amplitude we have put and right hand side will be omega mu h 0 a h and time dependent part will be factor from both side. Okay. And similarly, I get from this, you are getting this one. So, that means, del is basically equivalent to minus j k, del operator if you operate on this, it is basically minus j k. As I said that del del t is equal to j omega and del 2 del t 2 is equal to minus omega square and del operator if you do, then it will be plus minus j k depending on positive direction or negative direction and then if you are putting del square that will be actually k, k square equivalent to. Next you see, if I just follow this one, these are unit vector right, these are unit vectors, follow one of these equation, this equation or this equation, then I will be able to see that this is the unit vector, this is unit vector h. So, e naught by h naught if I see that is omega by mu, omega mu divided by k omega by k is a velocity mu 0 epsilon 0 or material medium we can write mu epsilon omega by k is equal to phase velocity we have shown here right. So, if you just substitute that that will be mu over epsilon square root that is actually known as eta impedance of the medium and if you are writing say free space it can be mu 0 by epsilon 0 that is actually 7377.6 ohm or something like that E 0 by H 0 in free space and in material medium it is eta mu 0 by epsilon 0. If it is non-magnetic dielectric material medium then you can consider that will be nothing but eta naught this is actually if it is free space we are considering eta naught this eta naught times we can write 1 by epsilon r or you can write eta naught by that actually refractive index. So, free space to material medium the intrinsic impedance related by this equation. So, it will be factor by refractive index right. In material medium impedance intrinsic impedance it is typically it is lower ok fine. Hope everything is clear these are all basic thing but very much important for this course. We have to again and again use these terminologies for understanding photonic integrated circuits. Now, try to follow that if you see this thing a k a e is a vector if you take cross product of unit vector along wave travelling direction k direction and electric field direction then you get a h. Similarly, a k cross a h it is basically a e that means, electric field is perpendicular to the both propagation direction and magnetic field. Similarly, here we can say that magnetic field direction is perpendicular to the propagation direction and electric field. And another thing you know that divergence E if you just see divergence E equal to say 0. So, this one this del operator you can replace by say minus j k if it is propagating in the forward direction j k dot E equal to 0. That means, electric field if you are taking dot product with k they just become 0 that means, E and k is perpendicular. Similarly, if you are just using divergence h equal to 0 that means, also k dot h will be equal to 0. So, that means, what I say that electric field and magnetic field both are perpendicular to the k vector. So, that is why 
wave propagating in the k direction and electric field and magnetic field they are perpendicular direction and electric field magnetic field also they are orthogonal to each other. So, that is why in the propagation wave is propagating in the k direction your electric field can be this direction and magnetic field can be this direction. Okay? So, that is how wave can propagate. Elect magnetic field will oscillate in this direction and electric field can oscillate in this direction and it can propagate the disturbance can propagate in this direction z direction. So, that is what we understand from the Maxwell's equation and Maxwell's equation tells us that even there is no material medium it is a free space absolute free space just simply epsilon r equal to 1 and mu r equal to 1. Then also this thing valid this solution also you can have and everything can be fulfilled that means in free space also electromagnetic wave can actually exist that is the discovery of Maxwell. So, that is how he interpreted that light wave comes from sun in through free space without any disturbance it can travel and from this actually we can just uh, to remember it we can just put like this a e h k. So, they are actual orthogonal if you are taking a e cross h then you can get a kth direction again you are just considering a k cross a e then you are getting magnetic field. So, just to remember we can just uh, use this uh, picture and conclusion is that e h k are mutually perpendicular to each other and one important thing here just think think about pointing vector that is also you learnt earlier pointing vector in electromagnetic wave equation may be in the basic courses. So, if you have a electric field defined by this as we have solved magnetic field defined by this. If I just try to find a solution for E cross H then it is called pointing vector and E means you know electric field dimension is volt per meter magnetic field is ampere per meter if you just multiply them then watt per meter square what means joule per second one per meter that means energy joule is energy energy flow per unit time for unit area energy flow per unit time per unit area along the direction of wave propagation that means if you can find this one e cross h that actually represents that how much energy it can carry in the propagation direction a e you can write a e cross a h that means k th direc a k direction that is actually a k direction right. So, that means this thing actually represents something along propagation direction and what is that something that is actually energy flow per unit time per unit area ok. Now, since we are using E and H in this complex form. So, we can show that actual if you are just using real part of it here and real part of it here and if you are using complex form it here and complex form here. So, using complex form if you just do that one half of real part of E cross H star that is equivalent to the average power flow along the direction of propagation and you have to take half. This can be also shown that that if you are just directly using uh, real part real part and you take cross H and then take average then you will be getting this value same thing assuming both E and H are complex value. So, you will be you have to remember this also for uh, time to time to understand wave guiding energy flow in the photonic integrated circuits. Okay. Now, the last thing in this stage I would like to uh, explain this equations whatever the solutions we got here for electric field and magnetic field they are coupled though because E naught and H naught is related E naught by H naught basically eta equal to square root of mu by epsilon. So, if you know electric field then you can find out what is the magnetic field and A H naught and E naught can be also complex they can have some kind of phase relationship that we will discuss later. But for the moment for free space and homogeneous medium typically they are in they are not complex you can consider real and they cannot go out of phase. These are called basically plane waves solution why that is plane wave if you just considering this is a k, k direction and 
you just consider a plane perpendicular to the k. This is propagating direction and if you just consider a plane just perpendicular to k direction. This is a red line means plane perpendicular to the this k direction. This is a plane. If it is z direction, then this red line is indicating x y plane. So, in the x y plane, suppose I define that this is the origin, this point is the origin and from here to here, this is propagation direction, I am just saying that up to a distance r naught, I consider a plane and in that plane, I plot another position vector r 1, another position vector r 2. Okay. Now, if I try, this is the position vector and this is k. Now, if I try to find out k dot r naught, what is that? That is basically k r naught. So, that is basically k r naught because k and r naught in the same direction. And if you are just considering this is theta 1 and this is theta 2, then this one is what? I can write k r 1 cos theta 1. R 1 cos theta 1 is equal to R 1 cos theta 1 equal to k R naught and k R 2 similarly I can write k R naught. So, that means this k dot R value in this plane in this x y plane x y z x y plane anywhere if you just consider if wave is propagating in this direction in that plane you can have the phase part this part is constant. So, you can imagine a plane perpendicular to the propagation direction where you can find everywhere at any instant of time phase is constant. That is why it is a called plane wave. Every plane perpendicular to the k propagation direction phase is constant at any instant of time. Next instant of time it is changing everywhere will be changing same way. So, that is why it is a plane wave. Again if you see you can imagine another line at a distance certain distance you can consider whatever it is a phase phase you know 0 to 2 pi it can vary 0 to 2 pi and if it is anything beyond 2 pi you can scale again from 0. Okay. So, you can consider at a particular distance also there also the phase is same whatever phase is here here also same phase. Let us consider this one if you try to find out what is the k dot r prime this is the r prime distance and this is r naught distance k dot k dot r prime k dot r naught you are just subtracting what is the phase difference between them. So, if you see phase difference they will be this one and if they are same I can consider 2 pi obviously there is a distance you can imagine 2 pi phase difference. So, that means this front to this front if it is 2 pi phase difference then what is happening here at the same time you can say that same thing is happening here at the same time it is same thing will be happening here in terms of phase because phase can vary from 0 to 2 pi. So, if that is the case then we can say that r prime not r not because k equal to 2 pi by lambda. If you are just putting that one this one will become like this r prime not r not. So, every this point to this point the distance is lambda by n lambda is the wavelength. So, whenever plane wave you represent normally in textbook or whenever we will be discussing that sometimes plane wave we just say that okay, this is a plane wave propagating in this direction. That means, these lines we are sketching just to represent the phase fronts, equi phase fronts at a distance lambda. Lambda over n means that is the wavelength in the material medium. If it is free space n equal to 1 normally, free space will be it is lambda naught and if it is material medium wavelength will be different. So, that is how plane wave we can get plane wave solutions though this type of plane wave is very very impractical you can approximately uh, uh, create this type of plane wave, but this type of plane wave consideration is actually helps to understand very well how the Maxwell's equation works how you can deal with Maxwell's equations. Okay. So, we just uh, uh, stop now for this lecture and uh, this is what we can understand that uh, how electromagnetic wave uh, can be uh, solution can be found from Maxwell's equation in free space and homogeneous dielectric medium, homogeneous dielectric non-magnetic medium. Now, next thing is that we will be just discussing about uh, other material medium for example, it is if it is a 
lossy medium, if it is a completely conducting medium, if it is a semiconducting medium, how it will work. So, we need to understand how light wave behaves, propagates along the uh, when it propagates inside the material medium or when it is incident in a material medium, when it comes from one material medium to another material medium, what happens? Those things we need to learn also. And these basic things are very important, whatever we discuss today will be just anything we will talk in terms of all these languages in future. Thank you very much.